Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani in the house. Today we got a nice live Q&A session. If you haven't subscribed to these yet and you want to partake, click the subscribe below, hit the bell so you get notifications on when I go live. So off the bat, Thyroid Reset Summit is live this week and next. Make sure you head over to thyroidresetsummit.com. Make sure you subscribe and give it away the first three chapters of my awesome new book called The Thyroid Reset. For 77 pages, we'll have a whole book coming out in the next month, but make sure you subscribe. You get access to that book totally for free. All right, guys, I'm looking forward to diving into tonight's questions. Let's head over here. What is going on, y'all? Irma writes in, hey, Dr. J, I'm enjoying the day two of the Thyroid Reset Summit, so I purchased it because I want to listen over and over. Great. Thank you so much for supporting it, Irma. Sandra writes in, Dr. J, is it okay to use diatomaceous earth and also MSM powder? I take the DE first thing in the AM. I take the MSM powder before lunch with ascorbic acid. Well, off the bat, DE is going to be very high in silica. It can be dehydrating. It's really good for like cleaning out worms and gut debris. It wouldn't be something I'd recommend that you take all the time because it's kind of a killer, right? MSM is a little different. That's a really good sulfur kind of compound. It's really good for the joints. It's good for detoxification and for neurotransmitters. Um, DE, I would just, I wouldn't do it all the time. I think it's good if you're in the middle of a, you know, 30 or 60 day kind of cleanse. Maybe you think you have some worms and you want to work on addressing that. Fine, but I would not be doing it all the time though. Paul writes in, I've done your pregnenolone and DHEA for two years straight. How long should I come off for? Well, I typically don't like patients doing it longer than a year, Paul. In general, I mean, it's not going to hurt you or anything. The doses are super low and it's all plant-based and it's all bioidentical. So it's not going to hurt you or anything, but we like to get your own levels kind of kick back up and, and um, we want to make sure the HP access and the rhythm is doing good. So if you're a patient, we should check back in if it's been a while and retest your levels and see where you're at. Sherry Rice said, Hey, Sherry, how you doing? What's a good supplement for hair growth? Well, I would say first thing, collagen is going to be one of the best. Collagen is going to be excellent. Uh, after collagen, I would say make sure your thyroid hormone is optimal. I know we, we chatted about that last week. And I would say outside of that for hair, I mean, you can always take extra biotin. There's a good product I like called Cosmetics, and it has biotin in it. It has PABA. It also has horsetail in there. And um, those compounds are really good for overall hair growth outside of just making sure your digestion's working, you're eating good fats, you're eating good proteins, and you have adequate thyroid hormone. Hope it helps. See so here, Kevin writes in, what's your opinion on the Viome test? I think you get a lot of information, but not a lot of it's actionable. Like I see a lot of patients that have gut issues and it's like, oh yeah, you have these issues, uh, eat avocados and blueberries. It's like, okay, great. I mean, I'm kind of already doing that. Now what? So you're kind of left with, all right, are there any infections? What's going on? Now, I'll tell you, sometimes on that biome, I've seen H. pylori and blasto come up. There's not a lot of other infections that are tested. So the infections, I think, are really important because these are more stressful on, on the gut and could be affecting malabsorption. Also, I want to know inflammation too, gluten sensitivity, inflammation, malabsorption. I think you get a lot of data, but I don't find it to be that helpful overall. Hey, Spivey, hope you're doing well. Andre writes in, Dr. J, hey, how you doing? Wagon wheel, IBS. Mary writes in, what about a liver cleanse using olive oil? Now, I mean, they have cleanses like that. I'm familiar with it. Basically, where you um, you know, drink some, drink some essentially either grapefruit juice, juice or apple juice, and you drink some Epsom salts, and then you chug down a whole bunch of olive oil, and it just causes your your liver or your gallbladder to contract and then spit out a whole bunch of bile. That's kind of the goal. And a lot of times you'll see a lot of stones. Uh, there was a letter in the, it was a article in the Townsend letter a couple of years back where they talked about the apple juice and the Epsom salts actually forming a lot of those crystals. So I'm not sure how much of that is the Epsom salts and the, and the olive oil and the apple juice kind of forming those crystals, or if they're all coming from the actual gallbladder. Either way, I think it can be helpful, but I would not be doing that the first thing. I think a lot of people, if they have stones or any, um, any sludge in there, it could potentially even cause gallbladder inflammation. Imagine squeezing down on a porcupine, right? It's like that. So we rather support liver and gallbladder function better, avoid the foods that could be irritating it, and then also soothe out and heal and kind of help with that bile flow before you come in there and hug a porcupine, so to speak. Primal Gene Price said, hey, Dr. J, excited about your new book. Can't wait to read it. What do you recommend my girlfriend for chronic acne scarring due to previous acne? She's been on a phase one diet. So for acne scarring, I mean, first get to the root cause of the acne. That's number one. So, you know, if it's a diet or gut issue and or um, 
food stuff, get to that, get the underlying issue so that's better. And then once you address that, I mean, things that you can do are going to be topical vitamin C and retinol vitamin A along with that. That's going to be super helpful. I like the Marie Varnique line. And in that line, I would be using like the anti-aging night oil. I'd be using the retinol uh, with the vitamin C as well. And then I would probably get all the inflammation down, get everything supported. And then I would find a really good cosmetic dermatologist to do some um, kind of more CO2 kind of fractionated fractal laser therapy to help stimulate the collagen and to help support any areas where maybe that collagen didn't quite fill in after like an acne pock or an acne scarring issue happened. But use all the natural stuff first, get the root cause done, give it six to eight months, maybe a year for all the inflammation to settle and see where you're at. And then maybe, um, you, you know, you don't really even need anything outside of just, um, getting nutrition back on track. If you need something, then you can try to do more of the natural things before you maybe use a filler or maybe you use um, PRP injection, something like that. Hope that helps. Let's see here. Andre writes in, strategies for overcoming recent food allergies that have come on from recent carb intolerances and accumulated stress. Well, number one, fix the stress. Anytime you're eating when you're chronically stressed, that's going to open up. That's going to create leaky gut. Number two, use HCL and enzymes so we can better break down those foods. It's always good when you're stressed to take HCL and enzymes so you can have better digestion because that sympathetic nervous system tone will prevent you from digesting things optimally. And then if there's any gut issues going on, like bacterial overgrowth or an infection, get that addressed. But at least do your best with the stress. Make sure you're chewing your food well. And then really optimize HCL and enzymes. Kevin writes in, thanks. Good job with the summit. Thanks so much, Kevin. I appreciate you supporting. K. Gupta writes in, I have one mild case of candida overgrowth. Does it get picked up in any labs? Well, I mean, it depends. What makes you think you have a candida overgrowth? If you're saying, well, I have athlete's foot or I have yeast issue or I have fungal fungus on my toenails or I have a tinea versicolor rash somewhere in my body, that's clinically indicative of candida overgrowth. So that is most important. Sometimes we don't get the labs to see it. We may see it in the stool in the form of candida, right? Or we may see it on an organic acid test in the form of diarabinitol in the urine. We may see it in both of those avenues. It's possible. If we don't, but we have clinical indications, then we'll treat it. We'll either use oil of oregano or, or other herbs that are really good. We also want to make sure other infections are addressed too, because sometimes candida travels with its brothers, sisters, and cousins. Um Generalized Anxiety writes in, I'm new to your channel and I have stomach issues for a long time. I've been on an AIP paleo diet for about three weeks, but still indigestion, bloating, and belching plus tummy aches. So off the bat, I mean, if you're on an AIP template, that's really good, but you may need to be starting off with that second R, which is replacing enzymes, acids, and maybe bile salts. You need to work with a good functional medicine doc, make sure you're chewing your food up well, make sure nothing is raw, and then um, you know, 30 chews per bite at least, and get the HCL and the enzymes on track and make sure those bowels are moving and make sure you're taking a look at how your stool is looking too. Um, there could be undigested food particles that could be a problem too. Yeah, and you have psoriasis, so an AIP template's a really good start for you. Good call on that. Bernardo writes in, what are your thoughts on benfotamine? Benfotamine is a fat-soluble B1. I think it's good, especially if you have diabetic issues and you need a more potent form of B1. I think it can be good. For most people, I don't think it's necessary. Sharon writes in, I recently had an O test, low on vitamin B6, glutamine, vitamin C, and low serotonin. Do you recommend, uh, so what's your question there? Uh, let me just see, oh, what do you recommend? Okay, so in general, I would I would be utilizing more B6 or more methylated B vitamins. B6 is really important for brain function and for mood. I'd wanna know what your clinical presentation is. Just knowing what those nutrients are that you're, you're lowering you know, is helpful, but I wanna know, are there any symptoms that you're presenting with that we could connect back to these nutrients? That'd be helpful. Outside of just using some of those compounds, I want to know more of your presentation so we can connect back. Paul writes in, what do you think of supplementing liposomal glutathione versus NAC to increase glutathione? In my line, we use um, liver supreme or antioxidant supreme for phase one support, which is like B vitamins and liver tonifying herbs. In phase two, we'll use detox aminos, which has like a lot of the cysteine, methionine, glutamine, glycine, taurine kind of amino acids, which support phase two. I do use a lot of glutathione as well for people that are more sensitive, um, just because sulfur amino acids, they're good, but you know, we have to convert them. We have to absorb it. There's a lot of, you know, conversion that has to happen. I still like that. So it depends. I go back and forth with patients, but my generalized detox plan uses the detox amino acids 
depending on what's going on with patients and how sensitive they are, we may throw in liposomal glutathione instead. So it really is a mixed bag. Chronic conditions writes in, why would probiotics cause gas, bloatamine, histamine, and dysbiosis? Well, it's fermentable. So if you have bacterial overgrowth, um, that's a FODMAP. It's fermentable so it can feed a lot of those dysbiotic bacteria and create problems, especially if you have you know, dysbiotic bacteria that's producing delactate, it could easily take that bifidobacter lactobacillus and create more um, essential gas from it. So that's where we use sporebiotics instead uh, until we work on killing or clearing things out, then maybe we can tolerate that on the back end. Lisa writes that I'm taking GI herbs. Do I take activated charcoal as much as I need to between meals? Is it just for nausea or any, any cramping? I'll use it if patients are having die off issues. If they're not having die off issues, then we won't necessarily do it. But if we're taking it while they're doing clearing herbs, we'll do it two to three hours after, after food and herbs and one hour before. And that's kind of where we'll take it to really maximize absorption so it's not going to be interfering with food or supplementation. Amelia writes in, Dr. J, I was listening to your podcast and the guest talked about not about how not enough HCL can keep your body from excreting excess estrogens. What's the correlation between estrogen and HCL? Um, I mean, the only thing I could think of is that a lot of the detoxification compounds that help run phase two detoxification are going to be sulfur amino acids. So I would imagine that if we don't have enough HCL, we may not break down those sulfur amino acids and we need those sulfur amino acids broken down so we can convert them into glutamine and or convert them into uh, glutathione, you know, N-acetylation, methylation, glutathione, conjugation, glucuronidation. All those things require sulfur amino acids. So I would imagine if we don't have enough sulfur aminos because we're not having enough HCL to break it down, that could potentially cause that issue. That's just off the top of my head. That's what makes the most sense to me. Um, Valden writes in, do you recommend grounding by using earthing devices? Yeah, I think it's good. I have an outlet that I plug in and I ground every night. I think it's helpful. It's very good. Uh, Generalized writes in, I don't have a gallbladder either. Yeah, you should have extra bile salts on there and HCL and enzymes too to be safe. Irma writes in, do you have an opinion on the Whole30 diet? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I know Melissa Hartwig. Um, in general, I think um, it's a kind of just a, a way to kind of start into a paleo template, right? It's basically paleo for the most part, maybe a little bit stricter with no refined sugar, no sweeteners. Uh, I think it may even have some odd immune elements, but it's basically uh, a trendy way to incorporate a paleo template, which I think is great. George writes in, do you think enzymes are more important than HCL for breaking down foods? Well, I mean, I think HCL is the most important because HCL lowers the pH, which helps activate enzymes. Enzymes are tend to be pH driven. So we need a good, nice low pH so we can activate enzymes. Now, that being said, if we're taking HCL and we're doing that, adding additional enzymes on board could be helpful because a lot of people that have, you know, a lot of gut issues, they have low elastase. So they may have low enzyme production anyway. So I think it only helps. And then we can also throw an extra lipase. So if we have gallbladder issues, that extra lipase will help take stress off the gallbladder too. Marion writes in, hey, Marion, hope you're doing good. Dr. J, I'm still feeling acidic, but what would you recommend? Oil of oregano brand, silver and or supplements. So when you say acidic, what do you mean, Marianne? Do you just mean like achy in the joints? Or do you mean like when you eat food, you feel a little bit of irritation on your, on your tummy? What do you mean by that? Um, regarding oil of oregano, of course, I love my GI Clear 5. It's enterically coated. It's enteric coated. It's a 75% carbacol extract, one of the most potent on the market. If you open it, it burns your throat. So it's potent. Um, silver, we, I do GI Clear 3, which is a basically a nano silver. So those are my two favorites, GI Clear 5 and 3. Um, elaborate below what you mean by acidic so I can connect the dots for you better. Generalize writes in, which omega-3 do you recommend? And also, what do you think of Total Restore from Dr. Gundry? Um, so omega-3, I like my omega-3 supreme, which is basically just a high quality fish oil, high quality fish oil. It's a triglyceride form, so it's well absorbed. We also added some lipase in it for maximal absorption as well, because if you have poor digestion, um, that may be a problem. Now, Total Restore, I saw it last week. I think it has Bacopa in it. It's a whole bunch of things to help you heal and deal with um, lectins better, if I remember correctly. Is it total restore gut lining support? Is that what it is? Let's see. Got the ingredients here now. Let's see. Oh, is this the food craving one? Let's see here. What do we got? 
Uh, is it not going to tell me? It may not tell me here. If you want to put it on screen, I'll look at it there. Paul writes in. Oh, Paul, where'd you go? Um, feel terrible two hours after taking one cap of heavy metal clear. What could this be? Yeah, you're mobilizing metals, man. Um, you're mobilizing metals. So if you're doing one cap and you feel bad, um, we may want to just start with something a little bit simpler, like modified citrus pectin by itself and keep it really simple. There's some glutathione support in that, and that could be mobilizing stuff, but that's a sign that we're probably pulling out some metals. Grandex writes in, what are your thoughts on using fluconazole for candida overgrowth? And if you were to use antibiotics along with an herbal approach for SIBO, which one would you recommend personally? Well, if you're going to do antibiotics, I want to know that we have SIBO, like a breath test, so we could see you know methane and hydrogen levels and see where they're at. Number two, we do a combination of rifaximin and neomycin. Typically, it's going to be like 500, 800 milligrams twice a day on the um, on the rifaximin or zifaxin. It's about 15 to 1600 milligrams total a day. And then the neomycin, I'm not sure the exact dosage on there. If you go to Allison Seebecker's site, she has a good protocol on there for antibiotics. And then in my line, it depends what came back. A lot of people don't just have candida. They may have candida, SIBO, and an infection. So typically, either a G. Eckler 145 or a G. Eckler 156. It depends. Fives are my candida killer, but I also use them at high doses for parasites. Six helps with candida and bacterial overgrowth. Four is a big bacterial killer, but also helps with parasites. I use Para-1, Mosapudica for worms and parasites. Two is my H. pylori killer. Three is silver, which can be used for biofilm busting as well. So it just depends. I, I use these in, in various combinations depending on the infection. Again, I've been using these things for like you know years, so I've been able to see which ones are the most effective pre and post testing, which is nice. Wagon writes in, can you take HCL and digestive enzymes together? Yeah, I have no problem with that. Some say take your enzymes like before food and then HCL after food. I just do it at the same time. I already have a hard enough time getting my patients to be compliant. The, to add more complexity to it would just uh, set them up for failure. Jack JMC writes in, can Saccharomyces boulardii cause side effects? Like what? I mean, it's possible, but it depends. I mean, number one, I'd pull it out for a bit, add it back in one cap at a time to be safe. Amelia writes in, best supplement tips for keeping immune system strong when everyone's dropping like flies. Uh, well, I typically, in my line, I have a product called Immuno Supreme. That's a pretty good blend. It's got like andrographis, astragalus, echinacea. It's got some monolarin. It's got some medicinal mushrooms. I like just in general like reishi. Reishi is great. It's proven to help upregulate natural killer cells. Natural killer cells are like the Navy SEAL, the Delta Force, the Army Rangers of your immune system. So they're, they're out in front attacking. I like it. I think it works great. Um, that's one of my big, big ones to help just kind of bump up my immune system in general. Produce man writes in, is Cytomel bad to take long-term like the rest of your life? Can the thyroid be healed without prescription meds like T3, T4? It's a great question. I only would use Cytomel as if someone could not ever use, you know, a, a glandular with T4 or T3 in it. And they still, you know, they didn't, they still didn't do well on tyrosine or synthroid T4, T3, T2, T1 glandulars like WP or MP didn't work. Then we could look at that. I mean, you got to take it more frequently. Number one, uh, can the thyroid be healed? It depends on how long autoimmunity has been going on for. If your immune system has been beating the crap out of your thyroid for a decade or two, you know, there may be a lot of scar tissue, you know, infiltration into that gland where that tissue is no longer functional and can't produce adequate levels of thyroid hormone to fill up those thyroid follicles. So it just depends on how long things have been going on for. The less time, the better. I always make it my goal to get people off any thyroid hormone that we may recommend at a time. It just depends. Can we prevent their thyroid symptoms from coming back up? And can we also pull them off and, and not cause their T3 and TSH to tank? TSH going up, T3 going down, that is. Okay, cool. Um, I just lost it. Okay, there we go. Wagon writes in, what is the best way to detox yourself and detox your body and rehydrate it after? Well, I mean, you can just add extra minerals into your water like a Redmond's Real Salt. I love that. Or a Pellegrino is great for hydration with good minerals and good clean water. For detoxification, I mean, it depends, right? Like just being able to digest good proteins and just drinking good water helps a lot because you're getting amino acids, you're getting good hydration. That helps detoxify. Um, you know, healthy levels of good low sugar green juice provides a lot of sulfur compounds, which can be helpful. A uh, sweating can be really great, like in a sauna. Uh, coffee enema can be great, which you know it's a pain in the butt, pun intended. So it's more for like patients that are sicker or have cancer. 
um, in my line, we use the, the liver supreme or the antioxidant supreme, and then we use the detox amino. So that's a phase one, phase two buster. That's helpful too. So a lot of different ways that you can do it there. Janine writes in, Dr. J, two days ago, I had a tooth extracted due to an infection. Should the organic test, should the organics test GI map and Dutch test be done at a later date? No, I think you're okay. I mean, are you on antibiotics though now? If you're on antibiotics, then maybe wait a little bit on the GI map. But I would just say I think that you'd be okay with that. If you're on the fence, feel free and call the individual labs. But I think you're okay. The only one that's that's in question is the GI map if you're on antibiotics. Um, generalized total restore from Gundry. You have to type Gundry. Yeah, I have it here in front of me, but it's not showing me any ingredients. Let's see if I can get another copy of it. I, I saw it last week. I had a patient look at it when you're with patients 60 hours a week you, you just you get every question in the book so you get really good at answering questions um yeah so magnesium zinc glutamine n-acetylglucosamine magnesium beta hydroxybutyrate grape seed licorice wormwood okay so this is for the gut lining this is some killers in there though wormwood's a big killer as well so i typically like to keep my soothers and my killers separate so there's a little bit of killing action in there i think it's okay i mean it just depends I have some sensitive patients, so I keep mine just to glutamine, DGL, and aloe just to be more hypoallergenic. But I think it's fine. B. Valden writes in, some people are talking about alkaline water, using alkaline water generators. What do you think about this since you talk about raising acidity? I mean, that's the thing. I mean, if you're drinking water that's alkaline, you definitely want to keep it way away from digesting food because the alkalinity will raise up that pH for sure and affect your digestion. Now, if you're just taking it just to hydrate yourself, it depends on how it's it's happening, right? They have hydrolysis generators that does it electrically. That may be okay. There's some people that'll do it with using like a potassium or a magnesium buffer in there as well. I mean, I think water is naturally uh, alkaline. So I think consuming alkaline water or, or I'm sorry, Water is naturally neutral, about a 7 pH. So within a 7, I think is fine. If you're doing too much excessive mineral buffers, alkaline mineral buffers, I mean, just take it as a supplement. I don't think you have to put it in your water um, to do that. Just take it as a supplement. Uh, if it's like via hydrolysis, I think it's I think it's all right. I, I think it's a little bit more gimmicky than anything else, in my opinion. Food is going to be, you know, inflammation in, in food is going to be the bigger um, stressor of acidity, not necessarily the acidity of the food, but the inflammation that causes the acidity in your body through in inflammation. Let's see here. Bernardo writes in, I'm a male, 34 years old. My CAR 201 taken one year ago showed 3.5 cortisol DHEA ratio. Assuming I'm trying to be my best to address the most important things like diet and lifestyle. Should I also take DHEA sulfate drops? Now lifting weights for about five or six weeks, would it be better? Would it be like the benefit from a boost in my anabolic hormones? I'd like to know your exact numbers. I'm not a big fan of DHEA ratio just because when your hormones are low, your ratio could look good. So I'd want to know your exact numbers. K. Gupta writes in, what test is used to pick up dysbiosis? Is SIBO and dysbiosis the same thing? Kind of. Um, Typically with SIBO, the only way to say to truly say it's SIBO, you have to have a breath test that's measuring gases like hydrogen or methane um, because the timing on when those gases come out can, can speak to the specific location of where the dysbiosis is. So if we see any, anything between like typically 20 or 40 minutes up to 120 minutes of elevation in the gases on the breath test, we can say, hey, that elevation is happening in the small intestine specifically. Now we may have other dysbiosis, maybe in the in the in the in the stomach, in the small intestine, or the large intestine in a stool test. But as you know, everything's moving out together and evacuating together, so everything kind of gets mixed up, right? So we don't quite get the location element. So we may see on a stool test, hey, there's dysbiosis, there's Citrobacter, there's Pseudomonas, there's Prevotella, there's Mycobacterium, whatever but we don't know the exact location. So we just call it kind of a generalized dysbiosis, but we know certain bacteria are common in SIBO, Citrobacter, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas. It's, it's a good assumption, but to be correct, we'll just say, hey, it's a, it's a generalized dysbiosis. Um, Marion writes in, stomach feels irritated, bloated, full feeling, and also full discomfort in the throat and esophagus, cutting back on coffee, 
sticking with tea for now. Yeah, cut out the coffee, cut out any tomatoes or tomatoes, tomato sauce. Are there any foods you slipped in there, Mary? And last time we were chatted, you were doing pretty good. I'd make sure you add back in some HCL and enzymes too. I know you've been working really hard and maybe that stress is just shutting down your digestion a little bit. So cut out those, any tomatoes or um, coffee and make sure you do a little bit of HCL and enzyme with your food and make sure you, you're kind of taking some time out at work to have a little break so you can relax and actually eat. Now you're, you're not on your feet standing up and eating on the go. Paul writes in, um, why do you have to make sure pets are parasite free? Well, you don't, but you just have to make sure, like my dog Butter's in the corner. Let me get her. Hold on. Butter, come on. All right, this is my dog Butter. She's great. So she's my companion at work all day. But in general, if, if Butter, if I give Butter a big kiss, I give her right on top of her head because her tongue can't reach that far because dogs lick their butt. <laughs> and then if they lick your face, they may give you a parasite. So you got to be careful with that. Um, so yeah, so you got to be careful with that. But outside of that, you don't have to make sure they're parasite free. If you want, you can always throw some diatomaceous earth in their food for like a month or so just to be on the safe side if you want. My dog will get some probiotics every now and then, some DE, and maybe we'll throw in for my cats. They get a little bit of extra CoQ10 for their gums. They also get just some gl some ground up glandulars. They like that. Um, Amelia writes in, what do I what do I want to look for when choosing a maca powder? Uh, you want to get it from me. You want the Feminescence brand. The Feminescence brand is the best. It's it's the one that where they have various phenotypes of maca. It's well tested and it's in specific um, airtight capsule to prevent it from oxidizing. So it's the feminescence. So if you're a cycling female, Amelia, you'd want to, in my store, you want the feminescence cycling product and you'd want two capsules taken a day. There's feminescence cycling for cycling. There's feminescence menopausal for women that, you know, are in menopause or later. And then there's a perimenopausal where if you're kind of in between the cycles aberrant, but you haven't been without a year, without a period, then we can add that in. You're welcome, Amelia. Creatively Creator writes in, how can I raise iron and potassium levels? Well, figure out what's causing the iron levels to be low. Are you vegetarian? Are you vegan? Number one, do you have excessive menstruation where you're bleeding a lot and losing a lot of iron in your in your um, blood, in your um, period? Or do you have a lot of gut issues, malabsorbing it through your stool? So you'd want to figure out what the underlying problems are. And again, you'd want to add more potassium in and add good quality iron in. My line, we use Iron Supreme, which is a um, iron bisglycinate, which is very well absorbed. So is um, iron gluconate. And then potassium, you need 4,700 milligrams a day. It's six to eight servings of green vegetables. One serving of a safe starch, like a squash or sweet potato, and one avocado gets you there. I know that because I've done the calculation with my patients hundreds of times. And then if you need to supplement, new salt is good. It's a um, potassium salt from cream of tartare, which works really good. Generalized writes, writes in, what can be causing belching and hunger symptoms after eating? Uh, I would say if you're belching and you're hungry after eating, not enough HCL. Brett writes in, tapering off PPI gastritis oh, after eating higher fat meal. Should I start HCL at one quarter tablet? Yeah, you can start at one quarter tablet. You could even just come in with some apple cider vinegar, like a teaspoon to a tablespoon first or sub it for lemon juice, see how you do with that, and then go up from a, you know, if you're sensitive, start at an eighth, and then go to a quarter, and then go to a half, and then go to a full tab. Just start nice and slow, a nice taper bread to make sure you don't irritate anything. I think that's great. Lavaldin writes in, our tinctures for parasites um, produce the same effect as capsules? They do. I mean, the herbs taste like crap, and some can be a little irritating. So um, I only use a lot of my tinctures for some patients that have um, swallowing issues or for kids. And a lot of times they're sweetened with like glycerin to cover up the taste because they're pretty bad. You want to taste a terrible herb, try ashwagandha in a tincture form. It's absolutely terrible. Uh, Rona Yellup writes in, would love to, would love if you could do a podcast or a convo about oxalates. They're quite toxic for some folks. And it's really talked about even in the functional medicine world. Did a big talk on this just a little while ago. I would um, go to my website, Rona, and go to the search. All my podcasts are transcribed. So if you put in that word, you'll be able to see every podcast that's been done on that topic. Great feedback, though. Bernardo writes in exact numbers were cortisol waking plus 30, 11.5, DHEA sulfate waking 
plus 30. 3.3. Now that's really low. DHEA at 3.3 is low. Cortisol waking plus 30, 11.5 is on the lower side too. It sounds like I'm not getting the whole entire test though. I need to see the, all the numbers. Waking, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and then typically between 1 and 11 and, and 1, and then 5, and then typically 10. All right. Thanks for Valden. Matt writes in, it seems like grass-fed HQ whey protein has sunflower less than it. Do you think that's an issue? I know collagen is better, but I'm just, I'm just seeing my intolerance to whey, which appears fine. Yeah, I think it's okay. Sunflower lecithin is really clean. There's not much protein in there. It's an emulsifying compound, so I think sunflower is good. Give it a try. You're welcome, Marion. Tyna Wynn writes in, does the still water hydrate your cells? I would say no. I would say no because it's missing a lot of minerals. So I would do a reverse osmosis instead of distilled and add some minerals back in to be safe. Grandex writes in, what's the best thing to do for constipation? Currently taking mag citrate, but bowels haven't really moved much besides a little diarrhea, which appears to be just undigested food. I mean, I would continue to up that until things are moving. But if you haven't, I'd be adding HCL and enzymes and make sure the food are dialed in too. Can you speak on water retention? I know in the past you mentioned possible thyroid, like my thyroid's pretty good enough uh, with selenium, kelp, tyrosine, maybe more potassium, lower sodium. Uh, it just depends. If you're seeing more water retention, in typically there could be mineral stuff going on. So I'd make sure potassium and magnesium are good. And I'd make sure that you have enough good like Redmond's real salt on board. And then if, if not, I want to know, did you have anything inflammatory recently that could have driven up inflammation that could be causing more water retention? So I need a little bit more info on that. You're welcome, Bavaldin. Generalized wrote in, have you considered making your own line of supplements? I do have them. Justinhealth.com slash shop. We're on the same wavelength tonight. And I have my various categories, uh, adrenals, thyroid, female hormones, and uh, nutrient support. Take a look at it. Tyne Wynn writes in, parasympathetic dominance, okay to juice greens daily. I think some people may say, oh, if you're parasympathetic dominant, like extra potassium and magnesium may make you even more relaxed. I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think those minerals and nutrients are really good. I would say if you don't feel good taking them, listen to your body, but I think that's fine. Just keep out the extra sugar that could slip into those juices from fruits or carrots. Excellent. Generalized Anxiety writes out, thanks for all your responses. God bless. Thank you, Generalized. Appreciate it. Grandex writes in, also, my stool test, is there is the little diarrhea I'm having going to work for a sample from my GI map? Yeah, I would do your best. It's a genetic test as long as you can fill that container up. I mean, you could always do um, an oxy powder if we need to add more support to get those bowels moving. Having good bowels, having your bowels moving is so important because we'll reabsorb a lot of those fecal toxins. Remember, half your stool is bacteria. So if we're reabsorbing a lot of bad bacteria, that's not good. That's going to go back into circulation. That's going to affect the toxification. could easily create stress in your gut and make it harder to digest food as well. So extra magnesium citrate is fine. You can also go on a magnesium oxy powder and up that until your bowels move. Matt White writes in, what tastes even worse is straight rhodiola powder. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, creates film. Yeah, I remember in, in doctorate school before tests, we would like line up like ginseng and rhodiola and we would do shots of adaptogenic herbs. I know, crazy times. CP writes in, my sister has a meat allergy due to aloha gala allergy. Is this due to a low histamine intolerance? What can be done? I'm not sure. I've never heard of aloha gala allergy. Trini writes in, referring to the meal map for autoimmune, can I eat other fruits and vegetables not listed? I mean, it depends. I mean, I, I think it'd probably be okay. That, that sheet's designed to be a one pager so you can print it out and put it on your fridge. But it depends. I would just want to approve it, but I would say more than likely. Amelia writes in, Dr. J, a maca question. I'm your patient with 16-year amenorrhea. Uh, would maca be good for you? Yes, it would be good for you. It would help with the HPAG axis, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, gonadal axis. So if you've been amenorrhea for a while, it's going to help stimulate LH and FSH. We may want to even throw some chase tree because chase tree tends to hit LH really well to really get those ovaries kind of woken up. We may even want to give you some glandular tissue at some point, like some OVAX or some glandular tissue for the pituitary or for the for the ovaries to, to one, provide nutrition, but number two, it can be a nice little jumpstart, a nice little stimulant too. But we'll talk about that next consult. 
Carlos writes in, hey, Carlos, hope you're doing good. Is it okay to take your brain to police supplement uh, a few days a week without having low dopamine and serotonin? Yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, anytime you're getting stressed or um, you eat sugar or drink alcohol, you burn through more serotonin and dopamine. So just taking it a few days a week is still fine and you'll still get some good benefit. Matt writes in, my water retention appears to be constant. Is it just um, never been on the radar until now? I've really gotten all the issues relatively resolved. Minerals appear to be okay. Tried higher and lower sodium. Yeah, it's hard to say. I, I would try adding more potassium in, see what happens. Uh, if not, we could look at thyroid and see if thyroid's an issue. Low thyroid can cause water retention. Low thyroid used to be cause, cause, called mixed edema a while back. So that you'd see a lot of swelling in and around the eyes. The edema part's kind of the give. So it could be a thyroid thing too. It's hard to say. You may just be a little bit more critical on yourself. It's hard to say. I need to see pictures. Uh, CP85 writes in. Vivalden writes in. Do you recommend supplementing minerals for someone who drinks distilled water or just getting minerals from food be enough? No, definitely supplement um, if you're drinking distilled water. You can get a product called Endure. And you can, you know, put that a little bit in your water. You can just do a good Redmond's Real Salt and put that in your water as well. Brett writes in, upping L-glutamine from Jaro. What amount in grams should I do to get the 10 grams a day? Typically, like a teaspoon is going to be like around three, two to three grams. So I'd say one to two teaspoons three times a day would be fine, Brett. Matt writes in, do you ever drink out of a steel water bottle? I noticed possibly a metallic taste, which isn't present in glass. Could this be some sort of a bad heavy metal leaching into the water? It's possible. I typically drink out of glass. I drink Topo Chico water during the day. I have a reverse osmosis um, in my house as well. And I have an Endure and a, a Redmond's Real Salt thing next to it. So I'll, I will add stuff. And then tonight after my live, I will have my one a day ginger kombucha. Brian writes in, what would cause me to have a low or bad mood, fatigue, and weakness when taking methylated B complex? Hard to say. I want to make sure that it's activated full weight and it's also um, has methylated B12. If that's still happening, I, I would probably pull out some of those B vitamins and give you like um, a product that's actually missing the full weight or missing the B12 to see if it's a B12 or full weight issue. That'd be helpful to know. Grand X writes in, what is the name of the oxy powder for constipation? Would like to order some ASAP off of Amazon. Thanks for answering all the questions. Dr. Jay, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I would go get Dr. Group's oxy powder. Dr. Group's oxy powder is great. Follow the instructions on the back of the bottle. Bernardo writes in, question, can I take DHEA drops? My CAR 201 results were 7 10-8, 4-6, 5-6, 1-1. Yeah, and DHEA. So yeah, you have very low DHEA and your cortisol is on the lower side. So you have a, a total cortisol sum of, let's see, it's the 30-minute reading. So 11 plus 4.6, that's 15, 15, 20, 20. Yeah, so 21. It's on the lower side for sure. Yeah, you could. Um, exactly. And if I give you more specifics on that, I'd have to get you in for a consult so we can dive in deeper though. Creatively writes in, is eating nuts on a daily basis bad for mineral absorption due to phytic acid? Um, I think it depends. Um, if you're getting a lot of extra minerals in your diet and you're eating really good and your digestion's good and your, your bowel movements look good, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if you're eating a lot of nuts, I would just try to get some nuts that are, are soaked so you're decreasing a lot of that phytate in there to help. I would look at that. See here, a couple of questions. Ashley writes in, should I take the digestive enzymes to increase my lipase and to help absorb other nutrients? I think enzymes and HCL and our bile salts are the low hanging fruit because if you don't have good digestive secretions, you're not going to be able to absorb all that good organic food you're eating. So enzymes, HCL, if your enzymes have extra lipase in it, great. If HCL and enzymes are enough, awesome. Some may need some extra bile salts. So if you're still your stool's Floating, that could be a telltale sign. Uh, what are your thoughts on iron infusions for low iron? Only if there's serious malabsorption. I've had a couple of Crohn's patients and ulcerative colitis patients that had just blood coming in their stool and just really awful absorption, and we recommended it for them. But for most, we can use a good quality iron bisglycinate or iron gluconate. Ashley writes in, can you have ulcers even if you test negative for H. pylori? It's possible. I mean, other types of issues could be occurring with SIBO or other infections, but H. pylori is a pretty good 
tell on that. I'd really want to know. I'd really want to test a couple other methods, not just blood or breath or stool, maybe all three to ensure that. Because if I see ulcers and there's no H. pylori on one test, I'm testing the other two methods to be safe. Okay, a couple other questions, guys. I got to roll. Do you recommend any vitamins or minerals after an infected tooth extraction? I'm not taking antibiotics. Well, what I would personally do is I would... I would do some oil pulling, number one. You could get um, the On Guard or the Thieves essential oil, and you could cut it with an oil carrier or some water, and you could rinse that around in your mouth because that'll be incredibly antimicrobial. That'd be helpful. You could also do just a really good cool little silver, and you could gargle with that and spit that out. That'd be helpful to really kill any infection there. And even some oil pulling, you could just go swish around some coconut oil for 10 minutes and spit it out. Hey, Ashley, you're totally welcome. Thanks. Of all the rice and that oxy powder works, it, I take six before bed and it flushes me out every day. Yeah, it works great. Just get to the root cause though. I'm okay for a, with a laxative that's more natural in the meantime. Um, we just got to get to the root cause. So get enzymes going, get HCL going. We may want to add in some ginger for some good natural motility support. Paul Rice, and is it worth adding zonulin to the GI map? Maybe. I mean, for me, I kind of just assume everyone with gut issues has leaky gut. So me knowing it doesn't help a ton, but I've done it recently. And it can be helpful with patients that are really on the fence or have chronic stuff and they really want to monitor their zonulin. Marianne writes in, I've been eating uh, pistachios. What do you think? It's causing bloating, question mark. What do you think about fructans? Well, I would just say, Marianne, we weren't having that issue when we chatted last week. So if that's what you added new, let's pull it out and see what happens. Pull it out, see if that moves the needle or not. I mean, fructans are going to be fermentable. So, I mean, fructans is the first F in FODMAPs, right? Fructo, fructans, oligo, disaccharide, mono, and polyol. So it's possible. So anything new, and if that's new, I'd pull it out and see how we do. All right, guys, what a phenomenal session. I went on probably too long. I'll be back either tomorrow or Friday. Head over to thyroidresetsummit.com. Make sure you subscribe. Get access to my new ebook, 77 pages. The full book will be over 200 pages. Lots of good images and pictures. So I appreciate the support, y'all. Comments below. Want to hear them? I want ideas for new, for new topics and for things I should be looking at and studying up on so I can bring you more intel. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the bell to get notifications. I'll be going live again real soon. You guys have a phenomenal night. Take care. Bye.